Hi, you're with Shandeep and Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about six interesting date table tricks. Let's start. All right, trick number one is using the auto date time feature for creating time intelligence calculations. If you don't already know what is auto date time in Power BI, let me just give you a quick overview of that. Let's just go over to our sales table and take a look at that. We have two date columns. We have the order date column and we have the ship date column. Now, when you have the auto date time feature turned on in Power BI, what Power BI is going to do automatically is that it's going to create a date table for every single date column that it actually finds inside of your data model. Now that date table that you create, you can't really see that date table, it's behind the scenes, but you can definitely access that date table. Now this particular thing or the trick that I'm trying to teach you is I would not really recommend you using it on a very large data model. It's absolutely going to slow down your calculations and the performance of the model, but there's no harm learning a trick. Any which ways, now that we have two columns here, now these two columns are going to have two built-in date tables and I can use those date tables to create time intelligence calculations. Now let's just take a look. So I'm just gonna go over to the visuals here. In the visuals, I am actually going to drag the order date into the rows and you can see that the order date automatically gets grouped into years, quarters, month and the day and that is nothing but the feature of the hidden date table. Any which ways, I'm just going to get rid of the quarter, I'm just going to get rid of the day and just expand this particular calculation and I have year and the month. Against every single year and the month, I'm actually going to drag my total sales into my pivot table and I'll get to see this year, month and the total sales across all the months. This is good enough. Let's just try to create a time intelligence calculation which actually performs a YTT. Now that time intelligence calculation will technically be performed on a legit date table that has all the columns. And as of now, although we have the date table, but we're not gonna use that. Let's just see that can we access that hidden date table and still be able to create that time intelligence calculation or not. So I'm just gonna come to the sales calculation, the sales table here. I'm just gonna right click and say new measure. And I'm gonna make a YTD measure right here. Call that as YTD sales and write a simple measure called total YTD and I'm just going to say that the YTD is going to be calculated for an expression which is nothing but total sales and then it asks me for a date that where is the date table and where is the date column now we're not allowed to use the date table that I already have created let's just go use the order date and once I pick up that particular column it also gives me a couple of options that the order date and the time intelligence feature is on so the order date column has the inherent uh, date table created which of the columns would you like to use from that inherent date table created now i'd like to use the date column and this particular date column is going to have all the dates without any particular day missing i'm just going to close the bracket commit to this formula press enter and this measure goes into my pivot table and i have the yTD created right here i have already warned you twice I will warn you once again, do not use this trick at scale in your models. This will actually slow down the performance of your models. Use it for as a nifty trick in case you want to do it for one small calculation. But for all the other calculations, I will highly recommend that go for a full-fledged calendar table and perform all the calculations over there. All right, trick number two. Now that I've said a couple of times that do not use the auto date time feature for any of your calculations, I will tell you that how can you actually turn it off so that you don't start even using accidentally. That feature can be turned off at two places you have to go to the file menu here and then go over to options and settings and click on options once you go here you will have two places one is going to be in all the future power bi files which is under the global setting and you can see that under data load it actually turns off the auto date time if i uncheck that all my future files that i create the future models that i create none of them will have auto date time activated that's good but if you actually want to turn it for the current file that we are actually working in, we'll have to go over to the current file option under data load, turn that particular thing off and we are good to go. Now that we have turned off the auto date time, most likely the calculation that we performed just a while ago for the YTD must have broken and that's totally okay. And if you actually go here, you can see that the calculation is broken. Even if I actually click on fix this, my YTD is giving me an error because now there is nothing called as dot date. There is no hidden date table that is there in my model as of now. All right, trick number three is about how do you activate inactive relationships? If you don't understand what that means, let's just present you a scenario. So let's just go over to our sales table and we'll see that we have an order date and the ship date column that we have been speaking about. Now, everything in the order date is nothing but when the order was placed and that's when we are considering the sale amount to be done or the sales is done. But we also have a ship date which could be a few days later and that is the column where we considered that the order has been shipped. Now, I may want to find the total sales as per the order date or the shipped sales as per the ship sales. 
Earlier, when I was trying to work with auto date time, I hadn't built a relationship between the date column, the auto date column and my date table or the calendar table that I have made. Let's just start from there and build a relationship between these two tables. So for now, I'm just going to hop over to the relationship tab, take the auto date and link that with my calendar date table. And a one to many relationship has been created between the two tables. Now I can actually take the year and the month and maybe see the sales by year and the month. What is my total sales? So I already have the year and the month from my calendar table against those year and the months I will present my total sales. Now this is good enough. Maybe I also want to find out that if 473 was the total amount sold in the month of July, how much of that 473 was also shipped. Now every single shipping calculation should not consider the order date. It should actually consider the ship date. Let me just show you an anomaly that might happen. Take a look at this particular transaction. If you take a look at this transaction, you will find that the sales was actually done in the month of April and I will definitely show my sales in the month of April. But when I'm showing total shipped sales, I actually should have to show this particular transaction and the entire value of this transaction in the month of May, not in the month of April. So we definitely need uh, another relationship to be created since we have a single date table. I also need to link the ship date to the date column of my calendar table, but we've already made one relationship. So let's just take a look. So if I just go over to the relationship tab and go over to my ship date and start to link that with my date table, you can see that another relationship is created, but that relationship is kind of dotted. A dotted relationship means that it's inactive. Power BI starts to get confused. It says that, Hey, we just created one relationship that was going from the date to the order date. And now you're telling me that I have another way to go filter the sales table. And that is the date and the ship date, which one should I follow? So it gets confused. And the second relationship that you make becomes inactive. Now we don't really want that relationship to be active and perform all the calculations, but we definitely want that relationship to be active for all the shipping calculations where I want to consider the ship date instead. How do we activate this particular relationship for a set calculations is something that we will take a look. So I'm just actually going to go over to the tab here and maybe create another measure. And I'm going to call this measure as total sales shipped. Now still trying to find the total sales, but not as per the order date, but I'm trying to find it as per the ship date. So I'm just going to write the calculate function and I'm just going to say, Hey, why don't we calculate the total sales, which is what I want to do. Sure enough. But why don't you change the relationship and start to use the dotted line instead, instead of the dark line. So I'm actually going to say that I want to use the function called use relationship and I will tell you which relationship to use. So why don't you use the calendar date, the one side of the relationship and the many side of the relationship is ship date. Use that particular relationship instead of the standard relationship available to you. I'm just going to press enter and drag that formula down to the pivot table. And what I can now see is if that was total value order sold, this is how uh, much was sh actually shipped. Now note that when you write the user relationship function, make sure that these two columns are actually having a dotted relationship in the data model. Otherwise this formula is actually going to give you an error because it would not be able to find the two columns connected. All right. Trick number four is the grouping or the binning technique. If you've not used this before, this is absolutely going to flatter you. Take a look at this particular pivot table that we have. We have the year here and we have the total sales here. Maybe what I'd like to do is I'd like to present my data or my yearly sales by two further subgroups. That means how much was the sale in the first half of the year and how much was the sale in the second half of the year. As of now, I just have the year. Even if I take a look at my calendar table or my date table, I don't really have the first half and the second half categorization. I just have the year quarter and the month. How do we actually do that? What we can actually do is use the inbuilt grouping feature of Power BI to create a bin that will distribute all the dates into the first half and the second half of the year for every single year. Let's just see how can we actually do that. I'm actually going to come to the date column right here, right click and say that I'd like to make a new group. It just opens up the small box and I can just start to put in some functions here, some options here. And it says that what would you like to call the column? I'd like to call the column as H1, maybe H1, H2. Uh, that's what I'd like to call the column. And it says what should be the size of the bin? The size of the bin should be six months and you have a couple of more options here. You can actually pick up that and you can just click on OK. And what this will actually do is create a physical column in your calendar table that you can actually use to segregate your data. And I'm actually going to see that I have a column created. If I actually drag that particular column to my pivot table underneath the year, I will now have the first half of the year presented and the second half of the year presented. 
maybe you don't like the way it's been showing up because it actually shows the start of the month and the start of the month of every single first half and the second half but it actually does a pretty good job of distributing that uh, uh, dates into first half and the second half of the year now let's just go take a look at that what is the column that was created and go take a look at that column physically so if I just go over to my calendar table you can see that I have an h1 h2 column created and it just shows me all the dates which are there in the first half of the year and all the dates which are there in the second half of the year and if I click on that particular column I can't really see any particular DAX in the formula bar but you can actually take a look at the DAX if you go to tabular editor so if I just go over to the external tools ribbon and open up my tabular editor I will be able to take a look at that DAX that was created for that particular column just take a look at here uh, it was h1 h2 and this is the DAX that was created but you can't really see that mentioned right here now this DAX actually gives me an opportunity to kind of understand the calculation and maybe customize this to the way that I would want and maybe present it more meaningfully where I'd like to show the data as the year and then h1 and then h2 the next year h1 and h2 let's just see how can we actually do that all right, trick number five is that how can you customize the previous pivot table, which is where I had the year and the date. I'd like to customize that as first half of the year and the second half of the year. Typically, the general columns that people tend to create in their date tables are quarter, months, and years. But let's just see that if you do want to categorize your data in the first half and the second half of the year, how can you actually do that? I'm actually going to jump over to my calendar table and start to create a column that actually gives me the value H1 and H2 against every single year. Let this column stay, and I'm just going to maybe make a new column and start to write a particular calculation here. I'm just going to call this column as half year. The first thing that I will end up doing is to find the month number of this particular date. So I'm just going to use the month function and get the month number of the calendar date column. Once I get the month number, I will have the month numbers anywhere between 1 to 12 for every single date that I have. Now once I have the month number, what I will do is I will actually push the month number to a multiplier of 6. Since every single half year will only have 6 months, Hence, I'm just trying to use the multiplier of 6. So I'm actually going to use a formula called a ceiling function. And the ceiling function is going to ask me, hey, what's your number? My number could be anywhere between 1 to 12. And that's the month function. And the significance or the factor that I'm trying to apply is 6. And every single number will then push itself to the next multiplier of 6. So all the numbers which are 1 to 6 will actually turn up to be 6. All the numbers which are 7 to 12 will all turn up to be the next multiplier which is 12. Now once I have the multiplier of 6, either 6 or 12 mentioned in that column, both 6 and 12 is actually divisible by 6. If I actually go divide that by 6, this is nothing but the H1 and H2. I can just prefix that with a little H here and that is nothing but my H1 and H2 calculation. And I can now present my data as for H1 and H2. Let's just actually do that. I'm actually going to go back to my binning technique, the previous example that I had, and just remove that particular column, H1 and H2, that got created automatically, and use that, the one that I have created now, to actually present my data in a more reasonable way that you would like to see. H1 and H2 is now presented. Now, one thing that I did forget to talk about while I was talking about the grouping technique, that the grouping technique is not limited to only using that on a date column. Since I'm discussing a date table video, I'm just using that on a date column, but you can actually use the grouping technique on any particular column to create the groups that you actually need. All right, trick number six is about restricting calculations when you don't want to see them. Take a look at the simple pivot table that I have. I have year and the months all across presented in my pivot table. And in this across in the pivot table, I have total sales and the sales of the last year. If I scroll down, you will see that I do get to see my sales of the last year, even though the current year's data is not present. So I don't have the data for August, September, October, November, December, and I still get to see this last year's sales. Maybe I want to build a calculation of the last year in such a way that it should only show up when the current year sales is present otherwise this all of this right from August until December should actually be not visible in the pivot table that I have. How do you actually restrict such calculations is something that we will take a look. So let's just hop over to my date table and let's just create a quick column in that column I'll perform a check um, when is the last date appearing in my sales table. So I'm just going to maybe make a new column right click and I'll say that I want to make a new column. And in that column, I will perform a simple check here. So sales present, that's the name of the column. And I will perform that, hey, weren't you first 
find out what is the largest date that you have in the sales table when an order was collected so max of the order date is something that i will find out it will then give me what is the largest order date so my data is until the 31st of july 2004 now i'm going to perform a check that check if this particular date is less than or equal to 31st july or not so i'm just going to maybe say that take a look at my calendar date which is in the current row and see that if that is lesser than or equal to the largest date in the sales table if that is true the sale was there if that is not true the sale wasn't there i'm actually going to now start to use this column in my calculation to turn off everything that was not really there in the sales table so i will come here and take a look at my last year calculation which is right here and if i take a look at the last year calculation i'm using total sales and i'm using the same period last year to go back to the previous period and capture the sales for that let's just create a small table and i will use something like a calculate table and i will say that this particular table that gets generated should be filtered by a condition that i have made in my calendar table and what is that condition that the sales should actually be present so sales present should actually be equal to true and that's my condition so this table will only give you those dates which are actually there as a true value in the calendar table which is where the sales was present and now if you particularly commit to this formula all these values are going to be turned off and you will actually get to see the value which is up till there a certain point in your actual sales table all right, those were my six date table tricks. Let me know in the comments which one did you find the best. And if you have any questions around this, please feel free to put them down in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. One quick shout out about my DAX course. If you're starting out and you need help with DAX right from scratch and build up the fundamentals first and then move on to solving more sophisticated, more challenging problems of your own data, I will highly recommend that you take a look at my DAX course. It's going to be extremely beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.